Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Survivor Now podcast. My name is Randy, and today I am joined by my fellow colleague, Ollie, and winner, the sole survivor of Survivor Australian Titans versus Rebels, Ferris Basil. Did I say your name right? Oh, Fer- yeah, yeah, you did. Ferris Basal. <laughs> oh, I was this close. I almost right. I almost didn't say the last name because I was like, oh. you're doing so good. Don't mess it up. <laughs> and I knew I was going to mess it up on the last one. I show. love that. That was amazing. It made me feel slightly uncomfortable. I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Ferris is like, what? What am I doing? The funny thing is, what I'm, what I was thinking of the entire time is for new people who have never seen this podcast and are just tuning in because they see Ferris, the winner, on the show. Like they're just gonna tune in and be like, what is going on? They're gonna feel slightly uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna, think you should be <laughs> they're gonna be like, I'm never turning this podcast on again. Like what? But okay, let me, let me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Survivor Now podcast. My name is Randy. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Ali, and the sole survivor. You you get it by now. Ferris is here. Ferris, oh my gosh. You know what? The first thing I'll say is I was re-watching the exit interview that we did and yes. that we did together because I wanted to make sure we're not asking you the exact same question that we asked during that time. So if you guys, if we don't ask something, you're like, wait, they didn't even mention this big moment of the season. Go back and watch the 15 minute version. It, it, yeah, it's, it's going to be there. So we're going to touch base on some of the more in-depth stuff, but I was re-watching that back and I did not give you enough flowers, my man, about you winning because when Liz won, I think I mentioned it like 20 times. I was like, congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> I said it at the very beginning, and I think it was because we were rushed with time. But at the end, yeah. I was just like, all right, thanks, Ferris. Have a good day. And I did not hype up enough that you are the sole survivor, and you won, and you played a Thank killer you. game. So Thank I, I want to start off by like looping this into a question. Has it sunk in now? The season has aired. Has it finally sunk in that you went out there and you won this game? God, no. No, 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 no. Not at all. Like, I even remember even watching some of the episodes. And I was just like, even me and my friend, we looked at each other and we were like, like that's me up there. That's so weird. Like, I can't believe that I'm on TV and playing this. Like, what's my life? You're like, it made no sense to me. It still hasn't sunk in. Um, I think I'm just, yeah, I'm just riding this you know, everlasting wave, but um, yeah, no, definitely hasn't sunken in at all. And we've been, <laughs> yeah, it probably will never for you. And we've been so excited to chat. We were talking beforehand about how the interview we had last time was so short. So I am so excited to have this like unedited hour long podcast with you where we can really go into everything. Cause that was the other thing. There was so many elements from the game we couldn't chat about cause we mm-hmm. had to mostly just talk about the finale um and if you guys are watching you can join in our live chat we have so many people right like already i'm trying to look through uh jenny is here she says ferris with a bunch of uh sludge sports ferris what is up my arab brother absolutely love that um and then yeah so you can join in the chat let us know ask questions ferris just speaking with you is you're such an amazing guy, and I, I think you would you love interacting with fans, right? Mm-hmm. Like, tell us yeah. how that experience has been now that Survivor has wrapped up. How much has your life changed? Are there fans coming up to you in the streets? Like, walk us yeah. through all that, man. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually not going out as much because I work from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, but every single time I, I, I do go out, yeah, there's, there's always, like, a... <laughs> Usually they're mums. My whole fan base is mums, and it's the best. I love it. 
Uh, I had like, even like this 70 year old Arab woman, she came up to me and she just started kissing my face. And she's like, I love you so much. And I'm like, oh, I love you too, my grandma. I love you, you like my grandma, I love it. Um, but yeah, no, it's been it's been absolutely crazy. Each time, each time I go out, um, yeah, someone does notice me. They like give me the the one two look because I'm a lot more groomed now. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm a lot more groomed, and I feel like a lot of them don't expect to see how tall I am, and they just look at me and they look like by the time I walk past them, it's a bit too late, and I just get like a bunch of stares from random people. Um, so if you do see me, please don't just stare at me. Just come say hi. <laughs> Because it does feel a bit like awkward to me. I'm like, does this person hate me or know me or want to fight me or what is it? Yes. Um, yeah, it's it's, yes. it's been amazing. It's been so humbling to, to interact with the fans. That's honestly been the most fun out of this whole experience. Like um, being able to interact with everyone was just amazing. I loved it. Like as a fan of, of the show, um, I would have loved to have seen, you know, so many contestants interact. Uh, with the public, so I was like, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I don't, I don't give a crap. I'm gonna interact with everyone as much as I possibly can. Are you uh, tall? Yeah. Are you tall? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't seem like like. How tall think, are you? Um, six three. Yeah. What? Six, yeah, I don't know why. Like, did you not see Kelly next to me? She was up to my nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, are you six three as well? Yeah. <laughs> what? The, what? Oh, yeah. I didn't know I was so short. Okay, well, sure. <laughs> before we get into, like, everything, I want to make sure I bring on a very special guest, Ferris, because we're here to have fun today. And oh, I just have to... I have to get... <laughs> the man. Oh, my God. You could not have brought a better guest, honestly. Jeez. How are you, brother? It was Garrick's birthday not too long ago, so happy birthday, Garrick. <laughs> Wow, how are Thank you? Thank you, man. Where I'm really you? well. How are you? I'm good. Are you in Bali? I am in Bali. <laughs> I, love this. I reached that? out to Garrick <laughs> this morning and I said, so so the thing was, is I was gonna bring him on towards the end of the podcast, but like it was so last minute, and I saw him backstage. I didn't want Garrick to sit here. If he's on vacation, I didn't want him to sit here for like an hour and a half waiting. So I'm like, let me just go ahead and bring Garrick on. <laughs> oh, this is a guys. I, yeah, I was quite happy to sit here for an hour and watch the man. <laughs> oh, oh, awesome. All right. So anyway, <laughs> how dare you? Who did that? <laughs> I, 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 I ain't in trouble for nothing. It was them. Um, um, oh long. man. Garrick, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, as we get talking about the game, like, Ferris, I truly mean it when I say, like, congratulations. And I wanted this mm. to be a celebration for you, my man. Like, kind of a way to look back on the season. And I, I while we have Garrick here, I got to get some of the questions that I have for both of you out here. Because, uh, Ferris, I hope you don't mind. I know this was your interview. No, I don't want it to be like... <laughs> I don't want to be talking about. Of course. Now that we have both of you here, this is something we haven't got the chance for you guys to speak on your relationship mm. together in the game because this was it was a dynamic relationship. And Garrick, when we spoke with you, you said you weren't even going to work with Ferris at first. You were kind of working with Kirby. And after she did you wrong, you joined on with Ferris. So just walk us through. I'll, I'll go to Garrick first here. Walk us through the relationship that you had with, with Ferris in the game, brother. Look, I, I actually had already sort of spotted Ferris and thought he, he's, he's an interesting guy I'd like to work with, but I had started to make some plans and some moves with Kirby. So it wasn't that I hadn't actually considered Ferris. I had. It's just that Kirby got in the door first or, was, you know, we started talking first and then, and then yeah, after that, initial knifing i just went yeah i'm gonna sort of slide this way a little <laughs> well it was really interesting to see you two work because you both kind of had similar things happen like you were both very observant and you were both very good at clocking stuff so kind of ferris what was that like working with kind of garrick on that because you were both able to clock a lot of things during yeah. obviously like both of your times 
he honestly felt like Mr. Miyagi in the Karate Kid. He like <laughs> played at the beginning. Nah, it was so good to work with someone that would sort of complement um, your 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 skills as well. So working with someone like Garrick, it was honestly so refreshing because we were constantly on the same wavelength. And when we were, the second he'd suggest something, I'd be like, "All right, I'm backing you. We're doing this together." Um, and I think it was vice versa as well. So it was just a mutual respect and um, a mutual understanding of both of our games and obviously the rest of the tribe. So it was so refreshing to work with someone like Garrick. I wish we got to work with each other a bit further. Sorry, Garrick, should have played my... <laughs> <laughs> I was just... Uh, that is literally where we were going next. You're not going to get away from this, man. I'm telling you right now. Just, just imagine, and I know it's my fault, but imagine what me and Garrick could have clocked that merge. Like, just mm. the content. It would have been so good. But, yeah, please... Like, yeah, I gotta. I have to ask. So you have Eileen in your ear saying, "Play the idol for Garrick. Play it for Garrick." You have <laughs> Garrick. You have Garrick telling you it's me tonight, man. I think it's me tonight, and we'll get to that side of things. But Ferris, walk us through because that's something we didn't get to talk a lot about when we spoke last time. I know it's a sour subject. I, I trust me, we got more fun topics coming up. But walk us through that and that moment of like you have your idol. You could save Garrick. But it's also like I will say on your behalf, that's something that I don't think anyone watching myself, Ollie, can really mm -hmm. understand in that moment. It is yeah. such a tough decision to play an idol that you oh, know it's cool. it's could be a game changing choice if you play it and waste it. So walk us through and that. Yeah, and 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 it, and it was a game changing choice. Who who knows how far I, I would have gone if I didn't have an idol? Um, mm. but. Uh, honestly, the way I saw it was number one, let's just get this out in the air. I would a thousand percent play my idol for Garrick. The only reason why I didn't is because I'm the type, and Garrick knows I'm the type that okay, give me the plan, give me your reasoning, and if we have enough time to discuss, I am all on board. But when it's just whispers of like things to do i'm just like i'm sorry i need i need to know reasoning i need to know why why do we think it's like if i when eileen said play your idol for garrick i would have done it if she just said like hey like eileen why like mm. an idol is such a big thing in this game and i can't make a a decision just like that without actually having to talk and i know you know um it, it was it was obviously the right move but for me i was like i'm not making any hasty decisions if if it was garrick um and if you do want me to play my idol for garrick we need to talk about it we need to know why because at the end of the day i also couldn't really trust eileen because garrick told me um, you know, <laughs> before that eileen was actually gonna gun for me um which he was right um so when she said that last minute i was just like okay i don't know if i could trust eileen she's the type that would have given me more information it was such last minute mm -hmm. i didn't me up before what's going on and that's why i said to eileen i'm like who did you vote for and she didn't answer me and i was like well i, I don't have enough information to make a big decision like that i'm sorry as much as i would have loved to and i would have a thousand percent it was just such a big move with such little information that i just could not risk if that's a if that's an okay answer with you guys yeah we can <laughs> yeah it, may, it, may, it makes it makes complete sense because yeah. Like when you look at the the game afterwards, like unfortunately Garrett did have to go, but you then had the protection <laughs> of that idol, so it yeah. did work out for you. But I do have a juicy question because um, yeah. Garrett, I don't know if you watched Ferris's exit interview, um, and he did have <laughs> obviously he had a lot of people he was oh, close to. Oh and, yeah! And oh. How, how do you? I know this juicy tidbit. Yeah. How, I know this juicy bit. How, yeah, how you, uh, Ferris. Yeah. How, how do you feel being second best to Raymond, though? <laughs> well, look, if the, if the roles were reversed and I'd lasted longer than Raymond, I reckon Raymond would have been second fiddle. But, <laughs> you know, now, 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 I, I said, when, when that came out, I looked at the camera, I went, ah, oh, bloody knew it, Ferris. <laughs> Look, okay, can I also defend myself on this? You, no, I... you can't. Yeah. By the way, by the way, if anyone, if it looks like I'm on my phone, I totally forgot to send. We did back-to-back -back interviews, and I forgot to send Ollie the questions that I have typed up. So that's, that's, okay. that's, that's, that's I don't want you to think I'm not paying attention. <laughs> no, no. I think look, 
Uh, at first glance, yes, I would have. I would have honestly sat next to uh, Raymond. But in saying that, you don't know what could have happened after merge with with Raymond making those hasty decisions of not voting with me. Um, and if Garrick stayed loyal, who knows? It could have. It could have changed towards the end. But again, ah, I'm Ferris, thinking, you know your name was never getting put down by me. Come on, mate. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> hey, oh, well, I mean. Gonna- to, to yeah. add on, there was another question here from Jenny in the chat. Would Kirby have lasted long in the game if Garrick stuck around? If he didn't go home, would we have seen Kirby throughout the entire game? No. Uh, no. I, I don't think so, only because of Garrick's passion pointing to get Kirby out. He 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 really he really wanted her out. Um and I think Garrick's the type where if you if you if you break his trust, he just will never work with you. Uh, whereas in me, I, I was a bit different in that sense. So it would have been, again, we would have been constantly going for Kirby. And I wouldn't have worked with Kirby if Garrick was next to me. If Garrick was next to me, he would have never worked. Well, at least I know. Um, he wouldn't have worked with Kirby. And Garrick would have been in my ear. And I would have been 100% with Garrick the entire time. So that could have been my downfall. Oh, yeah, definitely good. I mean, the, <laughs> the dynamic between you two were amazing. Garrick, sorry, I got your message saying I'll just wait around until until the end here. We're going to, if you want to wait around, I know you're on vacation, but we're going to send you yeah. to the back. Uh, just get to, to Ferris, some of Ferris's other questions, and then we'll bring you Absolutely. back to the end, man, so we can hang out. Yeah, here. I'm happy to hang around. Awesome, Easy, man. man. <laughs> oh my gosh i love so yeah i was nervous because i did that like so last minute and i saw garrick back there and i was like oh my gosh i hope he's not just sitting back there and like wondering when are they gonna bring me on <laughs> no i love garrick he's such an absolute like gentleman gentleman like to the core so now nah, amazing surprise what a way to start <laughs> oh my gosh so amazing so yeah i was hoping i caught you off guard and i was also hoping at the time fairs that you weren't like I thought this was my interview. All right. <laughs> so, no, of course not. Bring whoever you want in. Just oh, my God. Uh, Where's yeah. Valeria? Yeah, we'll make it. <laughs> we'll just make Where's it. Where's Kelly? Like, oh, we'll make it a reunion show. If we bring Kelly back on, I'm telling you, Garrick will not come back on. <laughs> so, all right. So now, hold on. Let me gather myself. That was amazing just having Garrick. Woo! All right, so yeah. I want to get back to the season at hand. We already talked mm. about how it feels that you were the sole survivor. And Ferris, like, prepare yourself. I told you I didn't give you your flowers last time, so I'm going to say that at least 20 times throughout this podcast I, that you're the sole I, survivor. I, uh, take If you're watching along, take a shot every time I say sole survivor. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, how does it feel, uh, being a Survivor fan, how does it feel that the show has gotten such a positive, like, outlook from the fans? Like how, um, yeah, how so, does that feel that they are looking at it in such like a positive light? I'm I'm over the moon, honestly. I, I'm so proud to be a part of this season. Like um, stepping into the game, I honestly, my goal, like I, I, I obviously wanted to win, but that wasn't like, that wasn't in front of my mind in the beginning. In front of my mind was I'm going to have fun. I'm going to make great TV and it's going to be the best season of Survivor ever. So any chance I get to showboat, I am going to showboat. I'm going to like make this like an amazing season as much as I possibly could. Um, So I'm honestly over the moon to hear that people like think this is one of the best seasons or like love the season at least. Like it's, so incredible. I'm all for the entertainment. Like I was watching some episodes. I knew exactly what was going to happen and my heart was like bumping up. Um, so yeah, no, I was on the edge of my seat just watching it myself. So amazing. No, Ooh. go ahead, yeah. Ali. No, I was going to say, no, it was such a joy because again, you were the sole survivor. Do a shot, Randy. Um, and <laughs> obviously when it came to this season, Titans versus Rebels, to, like I think all of us felt it was a really interesting one. Um, do you feel like in your everyday life, like you fit into kind of the rebels description? Because I think that was the thing when looking at the season. Like obviously, our ha- halfway through, everyone kind of forgot like oh, Colts versus rebels. But at the start, were you like, okay, yeah, this is this is why I'm a rebel? 
A thousand percent. Yeah. They, uh, I, I didn't know the theme. Like, I think they forgot to tell me the theme, to be honest, because they were like, okay, pack your bags. You know, they're just running me through everything. And I'm like, wait, isn't there a theme? And they're like, oh, yeah, you're a rebel. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, it's Titans versus Rebels. And I'm like, oh, okay, sweet, amazing. And then I thought about it. I'm like, this is perfect. This is like, um, you know, the HR manager that breaks his own rules, the, you know, um, the person that looks professional, but is the most immature person on the planet. Like, mm. I, I think it was, yeah, like a rebel to my core. I don't think there mm. is even a bit of Titan in me. So, um, yeah, no, it definitely fit Whoa. the theme. Like, you felt, yeah. Oh, who knows? <laughs> well, also, I would say you're a Titan now because you because you were the sole survivor. De yeah, definitely became a Titan. But I wanted to add, uh, kind of bounce off that where we're, when we're talking about the beginning of the game, because I was doing my research, going back, re-watching a lot of the big moments of the season to make sure that I didn't miss anything for this extended interview. And the first confessional we got from you, Ferris, as far as I know, it was the first. You said, I can be mistaken for being this dumb big Arab from Western City. Sydney, sorry. Yeah. And then did you go in the game? Was that true? Did you go into the game viewing that as like, this is how people might see me and I'm going yeah. to prove I'm wrong? Or like, how did you prepare for the game going in? Um, no, a thousand percent. Like it's, it, so in, if you, if you live in Sydney, you know that people from Western Sydney, they're a bit uh, more like edgier in a way. Um, and, you know, it's, it's definitely not the richest part of Sydney. Um, so there's a lot of like misconceptions on people from Western Sydney. Um, and a lot of them happen to be, you know, a lot of Arabs and, um, you know, especially in Western Sydney where we're seen as the guys that just, you know, go laboring at construction sites or like plumbers or like people, you know, um, that aren't in the most reputable um, jobs. So I, I knew I was going to be, you know, one of those guys straight off the bat that, that people were just going to look at me and be like, oh, okay, this is just another, you know, dumbass Arab from where obviously they didn't think that, but I feel like that was the, the consensus on the people from Western Sydney, which absolutely is not true. Mm -hmm. um, so I was going to play into that. I was going to like, I look like, um, you know, the executive uh, producer, he, he mentioned on one of the podcasts, he was like, Ferris can be seen as one of the popular kids, but really he's just a nerd, um, an absolute nerd on the inside. And I knew that I was going to, you know, mesh with the bros or whatever it may be, but I, I didn't want that. I wanted to make it seem like I would mesh with the bros and I'd mm. start this whole bros club, but I was not about that. Um, so that was my strategy going, going in. That's what I wanted to be seen as. And I think, you know, he worked out pretty well for the first couple of tribals. I mean, for the first couple of tribals, quite a lot here. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, the funny thing is as well, one other thing you kind of mentioned pre-season and at the start, you, you you kind of said that you were here to finish what King George couldn't do. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, you, you managed to do it because you were the sole survivor. Take a shot. Um, but, so how much inspiration did you take from kind of the survivor legend, George? Um, and yeah. now that you've you've won... Do you feel like you're a better player than George? Ferris, come on, own up to it. Ferris, come on. <laughs> okay. Um, firstly, look, a lot of people really uh, misunderstood that comment about, uh, about King George. And they said, oh, you know, George is his inspiration and he wants to follow in George's footsteps and George and George. And I was just like, no, it's not that. It's the fact that, you know, a player from Western Sydney came and made a name for himself on Survivor. Mm. Um, and I want to make sure that we are seen, people from Western Sydney are seen as smart people. Mm. That is the only reason why I brought up George, because it, it sort of came in with the whole, again, the whole dumb guy from Western Sydney. Um, me and George play completely different games. Yes. Very, very different. I think George is a better strategic player than I am. I do. I... Um, However, however, Ollie, we're going to disagree with so much today. I no, think no, socially, no. I, I might do um, better than George. Socially, mm. yes. I, I mm. think I'm a better social player than George. Yes. But, um, yeah, look, some of the strategies that George has come up with, you just can't take it away from him. Mm. Um, and, you know, I'll leave the king... Um, have, I'll let him have his crown. <laughs> he can have the crown. Well, I, I'll, I'll add in... Uh... 
Elaine at, so if you don't want to be king, she said, can we please change your name to the Smiling Annihilator? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, because you <laughs> went out there and absolutely killed it. I, I have an idea for the next season of Survivor Australia that I'll just put out there. We need it yeah. to be fair, Team Ferris versus Team George. And we need oh. like the ultimate showdown between oh, the two. God. I, the rest of the cast doesn't matter. It, we just need Ferris and George in the, in the oh, final two. It's just, yeah. them two for, just you two for 47 <laughs> days. <laughs> Honestly, he's such an amazing player, and I'll always give him props. Mm. I just think I'm just a very unorthodox player um, compared compared to George. I'll do mm. I'll do stuff that people don't agree with, but ends up working for me. Um, like I'll give Alex an idol and people will be like, what the hell are you doing? You're in the game of Survivor. Why are you giving idols away? Mm. Um, but it really works for me. Um, so I will I guess I'll create a lot of stupid chaos and just make it work for me compared to a lot of other players that won't be able to make it work for themselves. So very different players, I reckon. Yeah. Well, okay. So just to clarify why I pulled that face, it's not that I don't think, it's not that I think you're more strategic than George. Mm. I do agree. I think you both had diff different games because George basically was like balls to the wall, like in your face, like mm. big, big mm. moves. And I've I've constantly said this about you. You had such a masterful, subtle game. And that's where I feel like your strategy was because it was yeah. all in kind of the subtle mo the moves you did. They were all subtle, but had a big impact. And that's why they were able to carry. Just that's that's why I thought that makes okay. That that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Because I was, no way, George is a bit, is not a better strategic player than than I. But um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, think, I was very very subtle in, in mm. my moves, and I think that's what helped me sort of move along to make it seem like I wasn't uh, a big player. Uh, which which also leads to the whole tribal council that last tribal council and being so difficult to to explain my moves because I was so subtle. But mm. yeah, I think I agree with that. One. Well, Ferris, I obviously you're a big Survivor fan. Or how how much of Survivor had you seen before going out on the show? Um, I'm a fan. I'm not a super fan. Okay, <laughs> no. I'm not. I'm not Eileen fan. Uh, <laughs> like I, the the first <laughs> season of American Survivor I watched was when did when did the when did season forty six start? Three weeks ago, four yeah, weeks, three weeks, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. three weeks ago. <laughs> that's, that's my first season of US. Oh Survivor. my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but but in saying that, Australian Survivor, yeah, I've watched a decent amount. Um, mm. But you know what? I, I will say, I will backtrack on that. As a kid, I did watch American Survivor. I still remember as a kid, but I just don't remember any of them. So I'm just counting 46 as my first season. <laughs> Well, I, I brought that up because I wanted to ask before you went out there, people prepare for the show in different ways. You have super fans who are like practicing fire and they know everything about Survivor. You have people who have no idea what they're doing, trying to watch Survivor to catch up. How did you prepare when you knew, holy cow, I'm going out to Samoa. What what were your preparation tactics going into the season, man? Um, I ate a bunch of cheeseburgers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you I gotta bulk to... up <laughs> yeah, yeah. i was i was so big on that like the first couple of episodes i was like horrified uh watching myself back but um yeah look i ate a lot i i practiced a bit with fire but i was all, all, always like decent with fire mm. um i watched like a couple of episodes of like all stars and i was just honestly i said if i watch way too many episodes i'm going to be so in my head about it mm. uh, that's going to affect how i truly think and i applied because i believe in how i think not from the studies i'm going to be doing um like for example like again kirby kirby like if not the biggest player of this season he she hadn't watched anything um so i think it just comes down to what you're good at and honing honing in on what you're good at for me mm. it was just socializing and being a good social player and that's what i honed in on like I, I knew if i watched a bunch of episodes like me as a person i would be so in my thoughts about different strategies and what did george do and what did david do no i wasn't going to do any of that i was just going to go in and play my own game hmm. and uh, 
Yeah, you, you, you worked out. <laughs> no, I mean, it definitely it? worked. Yeah. <laughs> I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't finished the season. How far did you make it? <laughs> so I'm going to go way back to the beginning. I mean, way back. We're talking very, very early on in the game. Uh, we'll probably jump around here, but I want you called out the cuddle crew. You know, you were one of the people. You had a confessional where you're like, all right, Alex is over there with, I believe it was PETA. And then you yeah. had Sarah with Tobias. Before we get into why they were such a big threat, because again, this was something we didn't get to talk about in the, the short time that we had, just because we had to focus on kind of ladder game. But this was a big move for you, kind of mm. focus, you know, focusing on them. These are the people we need to get out, break this alliance. My first question, and this is such a dumb question, but it's something that I've been thinking about so much. Does <laughs> not... Does everyone not cuddle in the shelter? So what were they doing different that put them as the cuddle crew when like, isn't that a common thing? Everyone cuddles for warmth. Um, yes and no. Uh, there were a few people that weren't cuddling, but uh, I think it was the type of cuddling. Ah, um, uh, yeah. yeah. There's, there's arm around like, like just trying to keep your body warm cuddling and then there's okay oh, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah they um, cuddling yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so it was a very specific type of cuddling we were like okay that's not a, i'm trying to stay warm cuddling that's a that's a different cuddle yeah <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, but, now yeah. i'm just waiting for him to be like my cuddle buddy was garrick and like i'm waiting and that's how we, we don't know we don't need to ask him that we already know it was, it was <laughs> You know what's well, hilarious? My yeah, go ahead. Was Raymond. <laughs> I was about to say, I was about to say, if it wasn't Garrick, it was Raymond. Oh my God. This is the type of, and why did that not make the edit? I don't care that they're cuddling. I just need that kind of background. <laughs> but so they were the actual cuddle crew this season. Yeah. What we found out. But I mean, fair, it's like, why did they so early on? Why was that such a big group to target? Was it just because, look, that's a four. They are clearly together. We just need to nip that in the bud. And were you the one who, like, for, were you the first one to say we need to target that group? Or was it someone else that kind of came to you and said, hey, do you want to work with us to get one of them out? Um, so they they were seen as very very close and they isolated themselves um com compared to everyone else they had, they did isolate themselves um and then we just said okay look if you're if you're dumb enough to align with them and you know you're going to be at the bottom of that alliance then yeah you shouldn't even be playing this game um so we pretty much saw it as they're a strong fool they're all really, really close to each other in terms of socializing. That, like Sarah, for example, socialized with a lot of people, but we we definitely saw the divide at the end of the day, and we we're like, look, this is an easy four to pick off, and mm. they seem like they could be great players moving forward. So let's just make this easier for all of us misfits, and let's just start picking them off, um, rather than playing to the old narrative of let's just pick the weakest person off, you know, in the first first loop. Um, and in terms of who came up with the plan, I think that there was a moment where uh, Gary Kirby and I, we we stood aside and we were like, yeah, okay, you noticing the cuddle crew? Yep, so am I. Sweet. You want to go for them? Amazing. Who do you want to go for? Tobias? Peter? Peter? Awesome. Um, so it was really like, <laughs> tough, Peter. Yeah. That's very tough for you, Peter. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, but look, initially it actually was Tobias, and then that that ended up changing to Peter. But now yeah, I feel I think... even worse for Peter. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh well, but um, oh, well. yeah. So, so I think yeah, us three we, we we came up with that. Well, at least in in my view, that's that's what I saw happen. Who knows what Eileen would have said or Scotty or any of them? But yeah. Oh. Well, speaking of Tobias, um, because. The next kind of round, it was it was between Tobias and um, Alex. Alex, and mm -hmm. then obviously I cannot remember who it was that flipped their vote, Kelly. But how frustrated <laughs> were, were you at the like Tobias, like the, the the Tobias vote? Because you all got all of you guys had it planned, and there was a way to do it. And then obviously you kind of I believe to misplay the idol in a way as well. He he didn't he did yeah. negate two votes, but the majority yeah. of the votes were on him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like how was that vote as well? Okay. Um, so what they didn't show in the edit is to my reasoning as to why I wanted to play my idol. So 
this was after Kirby and Ree didn't vote with us. And I was like really wary of them. And Kirby was like really trying to gain my trust. And she was like, listen, the Cuddle crew, they are planning on writing your name down. I'm like, okay, sweet. I didn't know if I could trust Kirby. So I went to Rihanna. I'm like, okay, I know for a fact that the Cuddle crew is throwing my name out. I need to ask Rihanna what she's heard from the Cuddle crew. And if she lies to me, then Rihanna's not, Rihanna or Kirby, they're not voting with me. So I asked Rihanna and I'm like, Rihanna, have you heard of any names from the Cuddle crew? She's like, yeah, I have. I'm like, okay, who? Tell me. And she says, Kelly. And I'm like, okay, she's lying to me, which means she's not voting with me, which means I'm in trouble. So that's why I played my eye. And the next day, I realized, like, Reed voted with me. Why didn't, why on earth did she, didn't she tell me? So I asked her, I'm like, Reed, why didn't she tell me my name was coming up? And she's like, oh, I didn't want to upset you. And I was like, what? What do you mean? You didn't want to upset me. Like, I would have kept my idol. She's like, yeah, I know. But, like, they were all talking about you and I didn't want to tell you. And I felt really, really bad. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> but um, all in all, yeah, it was it was a very confusing vote um, because we, we did expect it to be a tie and then a revote on Alex. And then the second it wasn't, we looked around and then Kelly was like, what? She was like, it literally, like, looked like a kid got caught, like, red-handed in the cookie jar. <laughs> Saying like I, I just did what I was told, and we were like, "What? What were you told? You were told <laughs> your name. What are you talking about?" Um, so yeah, Hurricane we were, like, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Five 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 Five. that night, like everyone was just questioning Kelly. Sarah was was really really upset. She was crying. Sarah was questioning Kelly. Kelly gave like a whole analogy of. Of like her trying to save Sarah about Snow White and like how she's Snow White and she wanted to save her and everyone was just so confused. Wasn't that on um, her birthday as well? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on her birthday. So it was just a very stressful and confusing night. And I think that's the first time we realized, holy crap, Kelly can't be tamed. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was like he started her like villainous story. <laughs> oh it took, my it took you till then to figure that out. <laughs> Oh, oh, I, I do want to loop back days. just a little bit to the idol. <laughs> I wanted to. I want to loop back to the idol play. Elaine is all of us right now with these emojis. <laughs> but Ferris, you also made that idol play so cinematic, and I was like, oh, with the whole like, oh, what's yeah. this? Oh, what's this? Oh, I was like, so oh my gosh, she is playing this up so much. I loved it. Like, yes, Crazy. that's your moment. Did you know going in, did you have that plan of like, I'm going to make a major deal out of this? Like you knew what you were doing, right? Of course, of course. Like, and I honestly, I didn't care if you put a target on my back or not. I said, I said from day one, I wanted to make this a fun season. Mm. And if I have the chance to to show about and just be fun with it, of course I'm going to do it. I don't care. Um, so yeah, I, I thought about it and I was like, okay, I, I, Obviously, never found an idol. I have an idol. No one's played an idol yet. No one knows what he looks like. Let's just give this a dramatic review. It's amazing. So I was so excited for it. Um, but yeah, no, it was definitely planned. <laughs> well, not only that, but you went on to find a second idol. And mm. this time you had your, I believe this was the one, correct me if I'm wrong, that Garrick was there with you on or no? Was that the first one? No, that oh, was well, first yeah, all right. yeah, well, yeah. yeah, we'll loop back to that. But I wanted to talk about uh, that second idol you found. And like, Ferris, like, what made you so good at finding these idols? Like, this is not an easy thing to do on Survivor. Were you just out 24 7 looking? Did you not care? Like, how, what led you to find these idols? Obviously, we know one came with the box and then you found the second one. Walk us through that moment, man. Um, <laughs> For me, a lot of the strategy relied on on production as well. In terms of, <laughs> in terms of like, okay, um, they're not going to put the idol in this place because um, obviously they don't want people going, you know, around there. Or they're not going to put it like I basically summed it down as to where the possible locations will be. Um, again, I, I also saw it as okay, the likelihood of them placing an idol that's not near the footpath isn't very. Um, likely on the first couple of days because people aren't as familiar with with the jungle, so people want to be like you want, it'll be a lot easier in the beginning. So it's going to be a lot more closer to the footpaths compared to deep inside of the jungle mm. 
they're like, um, you know, producers are obviously chasing you down as well. Um, so there was a lot of mini strategies that I had. I won't review all of them, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I did. I did look multiple times. Like, mo I think the one I found with Raymond, I looked in that spot three days, like in a row. I kept going that back to that specific spot. Um, so I was really, really determined in that sense. And they, they obviously don't show you not finding the idol. So I went on so many times, like um, multiple times. And I just, I think I just got lucky with it, like a slight bit of strategy as well. And it just paid off for me. Nice. No, it definitely, like I did, it definitely paid off. And I love how you use that idol. I'm sure we're going to get to that as well. I loved mm. how you saved that idol to the very end, the way you used it. Uh, to kind of like mislead Caroline and Mark. It was amazing. I wanted to bring up, um, I want to jump to the Eden vote because this is something, and apologies, this is something that I should have asked um, when we spoke last because this was such a big moment. And you have a confessional, Ferris, when you go, if, if I see Eileen or Raymond's name, we are going to war. And then it was that initial, he reveals Raymond and you have this look over. Of yeah, like, I, just if I, did, I can't, I can't do it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was instantly. And I was like, Oh my gosh, shit's about to hit the fan. <laughs> and it, you, you kept saying that was the one where Eden gets sent home. Obviously they had to revote. And luckily for Raymond, it was, I believe Jaden who flipped Yes, mm. thank you. Sorry, there is so long ago now. Yes. I was trying to remember, and then you kept saying it's honestly, it's up there for it could be one of my favorite lines this season. It's definitely in the top three. Read you like a bloody book, <laughs> calling your shot instantly, telling them. So, how did your game change in that moment? And how honestly, I'll say it: how pissed were you in that moment when you when you were basically saying, "If I see Eileen or Raymond." We're, we're going to war. How mad were you when that went down? Um, there, there's only very few times I got, I got really, really mad on the show. And that was anything to do with Raymond. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it was. I just had this really, really protective nature over him. Um, even though he, like, and he, he felt like my, my little brother as well. Mm -hmm. So anything got to do with outcasting Raymond, not being the nicest person to Raymond's, writing Raymond's name down, anything negative towards Raymond, I just was not accepting from the get-go. No. This man has the most pure heart I've ever like seen on any person. Um, and to me, it was just like, okay, why, why are you going for Raymond? Why are you going? For, like, it just felt like an attack on me. I'm like, go for me, go for me, go for some. Why are you going for this sweet man? Um, so yeah, no, I was, I was really rattled that day. Um, it, it really did get to me. Uh, so yeah, when, when I first saw that name, I was like, yeah, no, it's, it's game on now. And when, when I say we're going to war, I don't like, I'm very subtle with, with, with my moves. Like, just like how I said, I'm going to get Charles out. I'm going to get Val out. I'm going to get winner out in my head. It's in time, Ferris, keep it in the back of your mind, but just know when the opportunity comes, we are striking. So it's not mm. out like from the get go, we're going guns blazing. Cause that's not how you play the game. Um, it's I'm going to keep this close to my chest. And the second I get a whiff of an opportunity where I can get you out, I'm getting you out. Um, so that that's how I saw it. In that case, I knew that Eden was the one starting this whole thing by watching him. And I'm like, okay, put Eden's name down then. Um, and, it, you know, he worked successfully. It's actually one of my favorite tribal councils like ever. I love it was it. so yeah. iconic. So it was good. such a good tribal council. <laughs> I loved it. Like seeing live tribal councils are so exciting. Mm. I, yeah, literally, I, I'm now remembering it. Yeah, I read you like a bloody book. I was like, that was the <laughs> iconic one. Speaking, speaking of, like, knowing when to take the opportunity, I actually now really understand your game a lot more because you really did that. Like, perfect example Ooh. is the Charles vote because it was like that yeah. opportunity and it was like, it was like, it was you, Eileen and Kirby. And your interactions during that tribal as well, I loved because you were kind of like... It was like the roles were reversed and you kind of, after you got your votes, you'll kind of look at them going, and what? Yeah. Come at me then. What are you yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. And honestly, I would not have been like that if they weren't so tough on Eileen. Again, Eileen was mm. someone that was very close to me. And the way I saw it was before that challenge happened, um, 
before that that challenge happened, it was they were going so hard on her, and I was just like, "Well, a lot of this stuff is is really unnecessary. You don't need to be going this hard at her." Um, you know, there, there's a game, and then I just felt like you know everyone was attacking her, and you know, poor sweet little Eileen was just you know just sitting down and like almost you know with a tail between her legs, and I didn't like seeing her like that. So the second we won, I even told her, I'm like, listen, if you're not cocky, I'm going to be cocky for us because we deserve this moment. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and, and it, it felt great. It felt great to defend her um, in, in that sense. Um, yeah, it was it was such a, like, a chef's kiss moment, lick your fingers moment, like, amazing. Mm. Well, yeah, well, you, were d- you were definitely someone who, like, was there for your friends. And, like, yeah. if, you, if you were there with someone, like, perfect people, like, Garrett, um Raymond, Eileen, Kurt, like yeah. those people you would bat for. Yeah, yeah, of course. And somehow I, I was seen as one of the most untrustworthy ones. I don't understand. It's all season, it was like instantly, it's like we gotta get Ferris out. And when you played, honestly, from what I saw, and like Ollie and I, we obviously like really analyzed the game. We try to look past the edit, and it seemed like you were one of the most loyal people <laughs> out there. Like you always had your alliance. Back, I mean, whoever was your number one ally at the time, because we can thank Kirby for that for part of it. But whoever was your number one ally, you always had their back. Uh, Ferris, th- this is going to seem like a quick turn, but I I've been waiting to talk about this with you, my friend. Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about that auction moment because oh. this is a moment everyone loves to to live out their dream of playing the Survivor auction, and you were so certain there was something under that box. And then you got to brush your teeth. I agree. I would have hated that reward. But some people in recent seasons love it. Like, yes, clean teeth. You hated it. You had this moment, uh, another one of my favorite moments, where you go, Jonathan, yep. step away from me right now. Yep. So, I would have slapped you. I would have slapped you. <laughs> so that has to be a- that has to be up there uh, as one of your like least favorite mo- or most pissed moments as well. Walk us through that because you see Raymond eating popcorn. You see Val enjoying a nice chicken parmesan. I don't remember if you had money, but the fact you let her get chicken parmesan for 120 or whatever, yeah. robbery. So you were waiting for that box. You brushed your teeth, man. You had the whitest smile out there, but you weren't happy about it. No, I wasn't. Like, I, you know what? I was so convinced there was going to be a stake because all, honestly, all I would ever talk about to the castmates, to the producers, like everyone, I was like, I need a stake. Like, there is no way I'm not having a stake. So at this auction, I was like, surely they're going to, you know, give me what I want. And then I, ironically, I even said, you know what? I'm not going to bid on anything that's covered because knowing my luck, it's going to be something crap. And then as, the bids are going on. I see this huge box. I'm like, oh, there's 100% something amazing in there, whether it's the set for life, a holiday. I, what yeah, is it, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's got to be an idol or something. And here I was thinking I'm smart. Yeah, here I am thinking I'm smarter than everyone else because nobody else really noticed it. Until Raymond was like, what's that box? And I was like, shut up, Raymond, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then, yeah, like, I started to realize, okay, um, no one has gotten anything crap yet. Uh, but again, I was just blinded by that box. And in the end, when JLP said, you want a trip? And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to Greece. I'm going to, I'm going, to, I'm going to Disneyland today. And then he pulls it up and it's just a chicken sink. I was like, I actually wanted to cry. I'm not joking. I was so hungry. The last time I had the reward was, the Mexican feast, which was it looked amazing. amazing. Mexican food, though, mm. yeah, it was great. But like <laughs> three weeks later, you're you want you know a burger, you want some protein. And when he pulled that up with the little jar of, of mints, <laughs> and I was actually, you know what, I was offering it to people after. I'm like, would you yeah. like a mint? Yeah, sure. After eating freaking all this food, I'm like, you guys can <laughs> just leave me the bloody mints. I was trying to be nice to you. You couldn't um, even, JLP didn't even like offer the beer that Valeria oh got when she God. just handed it back over. Like, I'm That's sure that could have been something that he put you're back You're traumatizing up. him now, Randy. <laughs> yeah, truly. I'm, I'm actually getting worked up right now. To I was about to say, the trauma, <laughs> the trauma well, you know is feeling. Because I'm fasting right now as well, and I still want to stay. <laughs> I can get you some toothpaste if you want. 
Feels to take by something. Greg, grab some. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean like we were having this lighthearted interview. It was fun, and then Ferris yeah, is no. like, "Gee, it thanks, Randy." Oh, okay. Well, Ferris now I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it even more intense, my friend. So okay. we got to the end game, and I, I'm just kind of jumping to the end, and then we got some more questions. Mm -hmm. We'll loop back to. But we got to this end game. You chose to take Carolina. And again, we, we spoke about like you beating Carolina. If you guys are watching and you didn't hear the answer, go back and check the other the other interview that we did with Ferris, the exit interview. But I, we didn't really get in depth about whether, you know, the situations, if you took other people to the finale, whether you believe you could have beat them in that moment. Obviously, Raymond was kind of your buddy that you would have loved to take to the end, as far as I know. If if you and Raymond are sitting there, do you still believe you have the game to beat Raymond in the end? Um, I think in terms of game, I could have. But honestly, it, it comes down to that final tribal council speech. Like, it really, really does. If if Like, who knows? If I buckled on that last tribal and Ray completely just smashed that speech, I reckon he could have had a really good chance of, mm -hmm. of, of winning as well. If It's all about your wording and how you explain your moves. Your moves are pointless if you don't know how to explain them properly. And I think that's a bit of the trouble that I had on that last tribal council. So I think, um, like, all, I, I reckon the top five, they all had, like, enough reason to, to win. Um, mm. And it just came down to how well you performed in the end. Uh, so mm. if we're, look, we're just talking about game and if the jury knew both of our games from start to finish, I reckon I could have taken it out. However, on that night, you never know what could have happened. Ray mm. could have completely outshined me and he could have taken it. Very, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he did. Um, well, so, I, well, I mean, yeah. Ferris, you, you talked about like the final five. Like I think this season had one of the best final fives that I can remember. Yeah. I mean, we can speak to a few people here. We got Raymond and Kirby <laughs> on call. <laughs> and oh, Kirby's here as well? <laughs> Look at this. This is amazing. I love this. Yes. <laughs> Ferris, Thank I don't you. know. Could you – wait, you got to tell me, Ferris. Could you see the private chat the entire time? He was not oh, looking at the private yeah, chat. Realize it. He was shit. not looking. I clocked that. I clocked he was not looking at this private chat because I was like, oh, everyone's really speaking. Really I was like, he's going to watch this. You guys are having a full conversation with each other. So let me just give you a background before we introduce. I think everybody knows who is here. This is like Amazing. Ferris's interview, but Ferris, your season, you had so many people that you worked along the way mm. that I had to. I reached out to them. By the way, all of you are amazing people and thank you thank you thank you thank you so much i reached out to them like two hours ago Ferris, and i said this is last minute can yeah. you join us and so i i just had to get them on and first off thank you so obviously we have raymond we have kirby <laughs> we have garrick Ferris, this is your toughest moment three people that this is your life <laughs> Hello, Ferris. This is your life. We got, we got. Three people. hours of the road, Raymond. <laughs> Raymond, you're, Raymond's gonna get me in trouble because he tried driving on our 15 minute interview, and they were like, Raymond. Yeah. Oh. So I will, I will add in. So we have Amy. Wow, jackpot. We have Jenny. Wow, great group here. Uh, we have Kara who added OMG. What a lineup. What an amazing surprise. And then best cast ever. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, Kirby. First off, I got to get to you because Raymond messaged me and said, Kirby's at work. I don't think she's going to be available. So I don't know how long we have you here, but I wanted to go to you. Yeah, you I, for I forgot how stubborn Kirby can be when it comes to making an idiot out of Ferris. So I'm actually not surprised that she is here. <laughs> Sorry to take right, away right. from your answer, but... <laughs> Sorry to take away from Kirby's moment, but... Yeah, I forgot, I forgot that she'll literally do anything to, to make Ferris look stupid. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Kirby. Kirby, so I have to ask you... Uh, I was about to ask Ferris this question, and honestly, I couldn't contain my excitement to get everyone on. But I asked him about Raymond in the final two. Say it's you and him in the final two. Do you reckon you could beat Ferris in that final two? Yeah. <laughs> the no, no, no. I was sorry. I was speaking. Um, again, it depends on, and I think Ferris said it when we were in the 
in the back room, but it depends on your pitch and how you sell it and the way that you say what your moves are. So, you know, if I choked under pressure, like he's a smooth operator. He he can sell you a car without an engine. He's pretty smooth. So <laughs> he did come out on top. <laughs> Raymond, what about you, buddy? You were listening back there. I almost brought you on about midway through and said, yeah. Ferris, let's just ask Raymond himself. <laughs> Okay, so if I'm sitting at the end with Ferris, Ferris definitely beats me. I think I get more votes than what the average person thinks. I think that I maybe get at my at my best three. I think if I'm, it, it really depends with jury and stuff like that. You need to take every single little thing into consideration, which is who's going to have your back on jury, who's going to be willing to say, hey, uh, Raymond, you did this move and it was mostly yours, stuff like that, and. With stuff like that, I think if I'm sitting at the end with Caroline or at the end with Mark, I think that Ferris has my back with a lot of the moves that we did together. I think that Kirby wins at the end against basically anyone. And, uh, yeah, it really depends. You need to take that into consideration as well. Mm. Garrick, but we got to get your opinion before I loop this back to Ferris. If you're sitting yeah. on that jury, like you saw the season play out and such, you, who are you voting? Are you voting for Kirby, who made you cry when she decided to switch her belt? <laughs> are you voting for Ferris, who, you know, your right hand buddy? Well, well we already know Ferris was uh, what his vote was going if it was between me and Raymond. So, yeah, <laughs> I so I think it's, my hands are tied. It's Raymond all over with Raymond's with Raymond's acting yeah. performance. <laughs> come on, man, he's the winner. <laughs> Ferris, Dude, me lying in the dirt for three days and not having to talk to half of those idiots out there was <laughs> probably the easiest thing I did out there. <laughs> okay, I mean, this is a Ferris, you kidding I, me? I, Ferris, I wanted to throw you this surprise party to celebrate you becoming the sole survivor. Take a shot. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I want to give you a chance to respond. How instrumental were these three people in your game? Whether that's Garrick and pre-merge, Kirby kind of that towards the end of the game when you're like, I got to work with Kirby here, M mainly because she got out all your allies, man. She was the only person left for you to work with. <laughs> or Raymond, who was your, your cuddle buddy. I, Raymond, you weren't yeah. in the back when he said that, but Ferris did reveal you guys were cuddle buddies. So. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, Ferris, is, Ferris is a very strong person to his religion and a very, very good um figurehead for i think the arrow community in australia and i think i, I as I, I don't know as much about it but i know that part of their religion he told me was that they aren't allowed to sleep next to other women when they're married and he took it very seriously i had to sleep next to him i think because of that it's a very admirable and respectable thing for from a very admirable and respectable person so good yeah. value raymond um i yeah. I absolutely Sorry, love that. But Ferris, how instrumental? No, you're all good. I was just saying, so how instrumental were these three in your game, man? Oh, so instrumental. Look, I, I wanted all of these three from day one. But Kirby <laughs> broke my heart and broke Gary's heart. <laughs> you broke Kirby. Kirby. Don't, don't even look Kirby, they're always coming for you, girl. Remember when you pulled out a bottle of and you didn't tell anyone after I just voted with you? Do you remember that? That was a turning point. <laughs> um, no, nah, they were they were super instrumental, honestly. Like having Raymond and Gary from the beginning, um, to have loyal allies like that in, in a game like this is like so rare. Um, and I would have done anything for them, but obviously play an idol for Gary. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's so important to like have um, two people in your alliance that you knew you could want to. Right, we're gonna get for you. Hey, can I get a Rebel Waffle meal and uh, a small one? What are you doing, Tom? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. Raymond, you are off your rocker, man. Do you see why I love this man? I, I'm obsessed with him. He just muted it after the order. I muted it for him. I muted it. Oh, I muted it. No, you know, no. I, I, this is amazing, and I expect nothing else. But while while Raymond is getting his cheeseburger, or whatever he's ordering, Kirby, I, I, I have to. While I have you here, I have to bring up the fact where we spoke to Eileen yesterday about kind of how this, um, how it worked out when. 
she was trying to bring everyone together. And we saw this after the tribe swap. You just lost Re, And it's almost like a mom saying, now where's Ferris going? Ferris is probably joining Raymond and getting a bird. <laughs> no, so yeah, we saw Eileen bring everyone together and say, guys, can we just stay unified for one vote? Can we stay rebel strong? Yeah, and obviously- for you and Ferris, it didn't work out. I don't know where Garrick and Raymond were at because they were on that same tribe. But why could we not just bring the rebels together? I know you said that Ferris broke up with you. It was not the other way around. <laughs> well, he broke my heart at the end of it. But no, when it when it came, to, um, not holding grudges, I was just sending my pay out here. Um, when it came to that vote, um, I like bringing the rebels together it wasn't ideal when they're sitting strong for and we're on the bottom of that it, it just didn't make sense yeah. and on top of that I didn't know what conversations were being had and I was really on edge in the sense of watching everyone so when I said to Ferris in the beach and Scotty let's do well, whenever that conversation came up about being rebel strong I sat back and then I watched movements and then I just saw things that I just wasn't really comfortable with so that was why and I already told the Titans that we'll work together. Oh, uh, <laughs> Ferris, I don't know. It kind of sounds like she was just never going to work with you at that moment, my man. Wait, hold on. Before I get your opinion, Garrick, do, do you have anything to add on? Because we've heard Ferris say his side of things a little bit earlier mm -hmm. on. So where were you at in this? Because obviously you were close to Ferris. Were you right alongside with Eileen saying, why can't we just all be friends over here? Um, I was a bit of a fence sitter at that moment. I still held that bloody grudge for Kirby at that time. Still thinking, geez, I, that bastard. But look, at the same time, I was thinking if they if they join forces, well, we're outnumbered and the dirty dogs, i got a hat for you, Kirby. I want one. Yeah, I love that hat. <laughs> so they got me. So, yeah, I, look, I, in my mind it was let's, let's get strong, but, yeah, I... I don't know. I think I flipped at the last minute and said, yeah, let's put Kirby's name down. So that went against me. That uh, plot twist. It was actually Garrick who broke up with Kirby this season. If you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, I think it was. <laughs> I mean, first of all, first, obviously, um, we talked a lot this season about you and Kirby, the relationship that you guys had. Matthew joked about it being a rom-com in a, in a way. You said you sent the video to Kirby, that video of him discussing it, and you guys were laughing about it. They're like that, it was such a dynamic story watching that all play out. Raymond, I can't with you. <laughs> but no. Uh, I can't. <laughs> but no, so Raymond, or not Raymond, mm -hmm. CML plus for now. So Ferris, yeah. anyways, um, what was it like towards the end of the game working with Kirby? We have to, while we have her here, we have to talk about that final like speech you gave where you stood up, you had the idol to give to Kirby, save her game. Kirby was taking you to the end. She said it in her exit interview. She was fully on board to take you to the end. How long did it take you? Were you sitting at camp just thinking about that iconic monologue that you were going to say? When did you decide again that I can't take Kirby to the end? I'm not playing my idol for her. Um, so I actually still hadn't decided. I was actually leaning more towards uh, playing the idol. For I've Kirby. lost my sound. Uh, oh, we got you there. <laughs> we can hear you. Um. Yeah, so I was leaning towards playing my idol for Kirby all the way up until, like, Tribal Council. Oh, I got and it. then as I sat down, I I actually remember telling Ray, I was like, I'm, I'm going to save Kirby. And then Ray was like, yep, all good. And then I looked at the jury and I was like... Did I say Sorry, guys, good? but I've, I've lost sound, so I'm probably out because I can't hear anymore. Oh, love you, Garrett. See you, Garrett. Love you, Garrett. If I do this, you might be able to Sorry, hear. Sorry, guys. It's Bowie. Where what are... can you do? <laughs> I... Garrett. Oh, Garrett going back on vacation. <laughs> um. So, so yeah, as as I looked at the jury, I was like, if, if I take this, this, this woman to the end, she's going to absolutely obliterate me. And if I don't take this chance, I don't know when I could 
I would be able to strike again. And I think Mark, he, he put it very simply. I looked at him and I saw, and I think he knew I was going to save him. And he just looked at me and he was like, don't be stupid. Like, in other words, you've been wanting to get her out for the past couple of weeks and now all of a sudden you're going to save her with your idol that you held for that long? Are you kidding me? And he was sort of like did, a wake-up call. Um, but did he, I he, actually he, tell you to save her? No, you didn't tell me to save did, her, did, but you, did, you, did, you did. knew my plan. You knew I wanted to. Um, I knew you and, wanted to. Yeah. And when I got up, it, was, it, was, it wasn't even planned. I was, like, just so gutted that, you know, someone that I've formed such a strong bond with, like, she's going to go home because I'm refusing to save her. So it really, really hurt at the same time, like, even playing it. I couldn't even look at her in the eye, to be honest. And I think she knows that as well. <laughs> um, we can but, tell now. <laughs> Dude, if I got to the end with Ferris, I was waiting to tell everyone, yeah, yeah, because I knew Ferris was really, really going to harp on about how he had the world record for the longest idol hold. I was getting ready, if, if we were to give that final travel council, to say, yeah, but he didn't do anything with it. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I had my whole oh. speech ready. I had this thing if I got to the end, because I did want to get to the end with you, because I thought it would be great because we did have a great relationship out there we spent so much time together and but i was waiting for that end speech for me to say something along the lines of everyone thinks ferris is the king but the real king is someone that's able to sit in the hammock all day and get his lackeys to do whatever he wants so i had i had this whole stupid speech ready and everything you then i was still I gonna lose replied, you know what i would have replied to that so thank god he didn't say that i would have yeah. replied, yeah i'm that much of a great player i didn't need to use this idol the entire time i just relied on my own gameplay so i would have said, i don't know <laughs> I, I that would have been a good response i would have been like i would be like yeah okay <laughs> whatever <laughs> Kurt, I, I, I got uh, okay. I, I have to adjust this and put Kirby in the middle because that's how the season played out where she would always get rid of the number one ally and just get in the middle of Ferris and his plans. <laughs> so Kirby, I mean, enlighten us here. You see, I, you mentioned it. You spoke about it in your exit interview with us. But you, you have Ferris who has this idol for you. He says he can't even look you in the eye. Walk us through that moment, how it played out. And were you devastated? Were you like, well done? How did you feel on your end? Um, that was the first tribal council that I felt uneasy because I had no control and I was solely relying on this man to keep me in the game. But when he jumped up and he said that big yarn, I don't even know what he was saying. I was like, just shut up. And if you're not going to play it, like, give it to JLP already for you. Like, I'm done. <laughs> but when he, when he saved himself, like after the fact, like obviously I was devastated. I'm pretty sure I, my head went into my hands and I was like, oh, my God, my game's done. Like mm. it was heartbreaking in that moment. But when I walked away, I was just like I was proud that he had made the right decision for him. Um, and obviously it's your game out. so far is done. It's not over yet. I think you're going to be asked back. We'll see. I might be. Um, <clears throat> I'm still in grieving. I'm grieving because our break. I thought this was like a let's come back together, let's work it out. But I'm not sure. <laughs> I was going to say, do we do we still need couples therapy for for this? I'm to, happy uh, to jump on with you too to work yeah. through this because this is not an idol, but it's it's you know I'm trying to figure out what it feels like to have one. I will, Dude, I will my contact, idols. Are, I will, my idols. I'm talking to right now. What I'll do is I'll. Uh, not me. I will contact Matthew and we will set up a weekly thing for both of you so you can sort this out. Yes. Well, <laughs> well Kirby, <laughs> Kirby, I didn't get a chance to speak with you during the exit interview. Uh, I was unavailable and I was devastated about it. But I did talk to, to Ferris about, about this. And when I asked him if he would go back and play again, I said, I feel like you guys are a package duo right now. Like, I feel like if Ferris goes back, you have to have Kirby on this season. How do you feel? Would you like to, like, play with Ferris again? Or do you want to, like, move on from things and have Kirby's own season, in a sense? Um, Like, I think I made Ferris's season. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> period. Period. <laughs> no, no. I like – I think I would like to go back on. I just don't know how soon. Um, and what that looks like. I need to learn how to find idols. 
But yeah, <laughs> it's it's an amazing game. Like I had so much fun, and you see our relationship is really up and down. But in the background, you see our banter. We're you know mostly teasing Kelly a lot, <laughs> and we're just having a laugh, healthy <laughs> banter. But when it came to gameplay, we were able to separate the two, and that was a really unique experience to have. Um, because it's yeah, it's a pretty vicious game when it wants to be. Mm. Well, now, now that all three of you are here, and you kind of just you mentioned you mentioned Kelly, so I kind of want to ask this question to all three of you, because obviously on Kelly's in um, when when Kelly was voted out, she 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 gave us all this very big revelation that all of us were very very shocked about. It's the mind blowing thing of the season that she was a um, psychologist. Like, what, how shocking was that to all of you? Because I mean, the editors did a very good, um, good job of going. But was that the actual reaction? Like, what was going on in, like, for all three of you? No, nah, that was. I remember. No, I remember my reaction. I think I turned maybe to Kirby or Ferris Wells, and I was like, "It all makes sense now." And I was like, <laughs> Look, to, in all fairness to Kelly. To be able to get out under someone's skin quite as much as Kelly is able to, you need to know the human mind. You need to be very good at it. And for a professional like Garrick to get, like, to be uh, as on edge with someone like Kelly as he was, and just, you need to know the human mind. So I was like, it all makes sense. Do you think she was fucking with me? I think Valeria that night is like, because, like, I'm a, psycho I'm a psychologist, and Valeria's like, I think she means psychotic and then in her usual way. That sounds like a nightmare. But I was like, no, it all makes sense because I have been on edge like the entire time while dealing with Kelly because first she's in my alliance and then she's the reason that like an uh, like an alliance member is probably Kirby going stole her from you guys. Kirby went and stole yeah, her I, right out I wasted you. so much time with Kelly, like doing the most awful games the whole time. I was like, well, at least if I do this, she's going to vote with me. But no, Kirby just comes in and like <laughs> doesn't even have to do all the hard yards. She's that good. She played a very good social game, that Kirby. <laughs> Full credit that to her. When she announced she was a psychologist, that was the first time in the entire game that I was blindsided. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I first, you had that. you had a reaction. Your eyes literally, I don't know if like this was just editor's magic, but you're like, no. yeah, yeah, that was my reaction. I was I was so shocked, honestly. And I think she expected us to like give her a standing ovation or something, but we were all just like <laughs> and I think, Kirby, I think Kirby was like spot on the next morning when she was like, that was the biggest blindside ever. <laughs> um, yeah, we didn't expect that. Oh my gosh. Well, okay. So I know we, we've been going a little long here, but and we still got some more questions just to ask you, Ferris. But the last thing I want to ask before I let Raymond and Kirby go here is we talked about this earlier with Ferris. Your guys' season has been so positively, or I, if I can talk, like it's had positive reviews from the fans, yeah. basically. Everyone has loved it. Everyone keeps saying how the cast was iconic, iconic moments. We've been doing a um, tournament on our Instagram about, you know, the best seasons of Survivor er ever. And your season is still in it, going to the final eight. People are... Maybe recency bias, but people loved your season. And I'll go to Raymond first here, and then I'll finish out with Kirby. How does it feel to have your season looked at in such a positive light? And Raymond, for you, I have this comment here. Raymond, you are so underestimated. Love you. And Thank you. Had, Thank you. We had people on your exit interview say that they were sad you didn't get a bigger edit. And people love you, man. So, I mean, Ferris has been during this interview praising how you, you were like a little brother to him. Thank you even, as well, Ferris. Even though you're the same age, which is my biggest blind side of the season <laughs> when Ferris told me that. But, Raymond, how, how does it feel to have your season looked in a positive light? Well, where, in my interview, I basically said to them, I said, I, I like, I'm sorry, actually, not in my interview. If, if I'm going to make an ass of myself on national television, I want it to be the best series of all time. I want it to be remembered. I wanted it to be uh, an encapsulation of what I like about Survivor, which is all the stupid little moments like um, 
Billy Garcia falling in love in Survivor or um, some guy in, in Micronesia playing a stick or something. So my uh, what I wanted to do going out there was create moments like that. And I did all I could to do them. And maybe some of the moments that maybe weren't shown and all that stuff were just a little bit too weird for, a, for, a, for an average audience of middle-aged people. But... Um, all of us out there wanted to make good TV. They, they cast 12 people who applied and majority of them were super fans and 12 recruits who are still brilliant. And you need like season 46 has gone the full fledge of just high, um, getting super fans. And you need that dynamic. You need the people for the super fans and the manipulators to manipulate. Uh, so there's that side, but also the ones that were recruits were just, brilliantly selected like kirby for instance one of the best people i think to play australian survivor is a recruit and just like so they did spot on the fact that our executive producer is a massive fan of the show and mm -hmm. uh even though he like people don't like sort of sort of the twists he he did what he could to stop there from being twists from merge onwards which was something that he had in mind there is just mm -hmm. a lot of fans a lot of people working on the show the cast was brilliant and the fact that a lot of them are super fans who want to make good tv and make the best season of survivor it's just that perfect encapsulation of of a newbie season and it's, it's it i couldn't ask to be on a better season than this group Kirby. Than this one. Yeah. Kirby, that that was so well said. Like, wrap us up here in terms of like how this season, how it feels for you to have the season looked in a positive light. Yeah, um, I, I I applied through LinkedIn, so I'm not a recruit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually have never seen Survivor, so when I went out there, I wanted to play sort of a fearless, no regret sort of game, but. I was comfortable to be myself because of people like Ferris and Ray who allowed me to do that. So to be able to have the banter and build those connections and then, you know, play the game that we play and remove the it's not personal is huge in a game like this But because a lot of people are really emotional and they do take it personally. Like, yes, we didn't vote together last night, but why not do it tonight? Like, let's just change it up. So I don't know what previous seasons looks like in that regard, but... I think our personalities and the ability to banter and just adjust, I love that sort of gameplay. It suits me because I thrive in that. That's my sort of safe space, whereas everyone who is structured and has this gameplay or game plan in place, it's pretty predictable and it's easy to sort of navigate and I find that mm. a little bit boring and that's just me in, in life. I loved it. The iconic moments that we got all season, like seriously to all three of you, thank you for like just the entertainment side of things and what you provided for us. Cause you all killed it. And I had to bring you on here because obviously you guys played a big part in, in the winner's game over here. He's right here. The sole survivor <laughs> fair is take a shot. And but as far as I'm concerned, it's all us Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yeah. us. Nah, Kirby. Ferris played such a great game. He, play, he played a really good game. I was going to say, I don't know if you guys have claimed, like, I don't know if you've went to Ferris yet and say, yo, man, you owe us a beer, especially Kirby, the fact that you didn't I got a free yet. lunch. <laughs> and he's off. I send him my play ID every day. Thank you guys so much for joining on, doing this short cameo for us, and especially the fact – to everyone watching, I kid you not, like I said, I reached out like two hours before and I was like, hey, if you're available. <laughs> so I appreciate it. But even though you guys did great talking, Ollie and I, Ferris came to us first. So we're taking his side and we have to yes. vote you out. So just <laughs> just like the just like the real show, you're not gonna make it to the end. Can you put can Sorry. you send Kirby out of the chat like just before me? Yes. So I can like, <laughs> get ahead of her again. No, wait a minute. <laughs> just I, one last time. No, Ray, I, got, we... I got you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, seriously. Oh, okay. much love to both of you kirby raymond enjoy the rest of your day guys thank you so much wow. i'm so glad that everyone enjoyed the series later <laughs> have a good one thank you kirby he still left before kirby <laughs> <laughs> all right so gone. this is still this is still all oh about ferret yes well that was the thing that i was worried about when I reached out, I was like, 
Do I bring them on or is this going to make Ferris mad because it's supposed to be his moment? So I hope you, (laughs) I was also, I was also worried that you were going to look in the private chat because I was messaging them because Garrick was sitting back there for like an hour. So was Raymond. And I was like, guys, I'm bringing you in at like at the end of this. So no, we still got it. This is the one time he didn't. You did not have good observation skills. That Ferris was the one time. I was like, I kept looking at them. There was a point I was like, no, he's not. I'm giving my attention to you guys. At least you know I'm paying attention to you guys. (laughs) Man, every every time they came on, I was just there like, I'm not giving (laughs) away. Ferris, we have a few more questions to ask you here. If you still got time, and I feel well, not only did I catch you off guard with that, I totally didn't prepare you. I was talking about food and you're still fasting. And then I saw no. you do this like one time. I was like, oh my gosh, is he is he tired on our podcast? No, 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 no. I'm very fidgety. So please don't, don't miss me. <laughs> no, you're all no, good. I just I, I I love like the time we've had so far. And I <laughs> love that we get to break down the game like this. Yeah. So I wanted to the bring up the fact of you you applied to the show, correct? I didn't yeah. know if you were yeah. So you yeah. applied. This is something that a lot of fans have been asking us in the sense of people who want to go out and they want to apply and they want to experience this themselves, whether they're a super fan or they just want to challenge themselves. What advice do you have uh, to give the people who want to go and apply? (laughs) Oli, I love that. Um, Look, I think at the end of the day, these producers are making a TV show. Uh, so if you, if they can't make a story out of you, or if you can't be seen as someone that can hold, (laughs) or if you can't be someone that can be seen as, um, you know, good on TV in terms of entertainment value, I, I think at the end of the day, you won't get casted. No matter how much of a super fan you are, uh, no matter how many episodes you've watched, I don't think it matters. I think what matters is that they can build a story around you. You can be um, entertaining to the audience. You can drive, you can make audience feel emotions, whether it's love, hate, whatever it may be, but you've got that power. And I think what they also love seeing is outside Ferris versus inside Ferris. Mm. Like what, what people think about Ferris and when Ferris actually plays what they actually feel. So and if you're that typical person as well, if it's the complete opposite, if, you know, I was this dumb, you know, Arab from Western Sydney, play into that. Like, regardless of, of, of um, you know, what you're being seen as, play into it. So I think at the end of the day, they are making a show. So you need to present yourself as the most entertaining version of yourself, but while still being true to yourself at the same time. Um, that's the best advice I can give in all of the video auditions or whatever it is. They don't want to hear how many you know episodes you've watched or you know um, how many seasons you've seen. They want to hear you know who is Randy, who is Ollie, and how can we make a show around Randy or Ollie? Um, and I think yeah, that's the best advice I can give. It's it's called a comedy. That's how you make a show between me. <laughs> 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 Did I? I was gonna say it would be a comedy with me. I'd just be, I'd just be slagging everyone off. Oh my god! When you found I'm out, professional fuck. When... <laughs> Ferris, when you found out you were going out on the show, what was your excitement level like? Mm-hmm. When you actually got that call of like, "Hey, you're going out to Samoa. You're doing this thing." I was, I was still confused if I got onto the show or not. I was so confused. I promise you, it was like two weeks before, and I've already said this. They haven't even told me the theme. Um, so they were just like, yeah, just needed you need you to, you know, fill out a couple of these forms. I'm like, okay, sweet. And they were like, yep, and get this close, that close. I'm like, wait, am I on the show? What's going on? Um, so <laughs> I think, and then he literally said, he was like, oh, did, did you not get the memo? I'm like, no, I didn't. And he was like, oh, yeah, you're on the show. Congratulations. <laughs> so I was like, over the moon. I was so nervous if I was able to take work off. Um, you know, because this was, you know, a big step in my career as well. And I didn't want to risk losing that. Um, there was a lot of ifs, ands or buts, and I was super, super nervous, but thankfully it all worked out well. Um, but yeah, I was so excited. Um, at the end, at once all of the like admin stuff was done and out of the way in the boring stuff, I was like, oh, holy crap. I'm, 
I don't know what I'm getting myself into, and that kind of excites me, and I like mm. that. Uh, so, yeah, I was over the moon. Hey, Ollie, you know what we were robbed from? I mean, obviously, Ferris isn't going to complain, but I know this man has some style, and we <laughs> were probably robbed of some of the best jury outfits. Yeah. Like, I know he had to have some mm. fire jury outfits. Mm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, he, um, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say you no, you had a good castaway look. Your the <laughs> the shirt you had, I was like, Spark, yep, yeah, well done. Yeah, yeah, I really embraced the whole castaway look as well. Like towards <laughs> the end, I looked like an absolute troll with my beard. And what did what did your the... wife say? Like when your wife first saw you, did she have a reaction of like mm. what she was terrified when I ran up to her. She was literally, she was like, I saw this like big bearded man running towards me and I cracked myself. I was like, Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> like, amazing. Um, yeah, I was so, like, towards the end, I was when I was watching myself back, I was a completely different person towards <laughs> that end. I actually looked like, What was his name? The guy from Castaway, Tom Hanks. I looked yeah, like, Yeah, 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 like horrible. <laughs> I just loved one like one of my favorite things about your whole look is the fact of like I remember the first time you put your hair down and I was like, yeah. where did yeah. all that hair come from? Yeah. Because when you have like a hat on or something, you don't see it. Like yeah, you don't see that. No, it looks like you have short hair. And then I remember seeing you like, sorry, this we've reached the point of the uh, video where it's like less about the game and more about like super fan stuff. That's like, okay. yeah. <laughs> oh, I was saying that more for the audience. Like, yeah. <laughs> <we're> just, <laughs> this is our moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, this is just us hanging out now because usually we might get a comment where they're like, why are we talking about his hair right now? And I was like, because why not? Um, so, yeah, you let your hair down and I was like, oh my gosh, you had like the island look down as far as I'm yeah. concerned. <laughs> yeah, I remember, you know, some of the girls, they were actually like, they were saying, how did you get your hair like this? While all their hairs were like knotted and stuff. And I'm just like flicking it in the water. <laughs> <laughs> how um, difficult was it? Like someone who I, I don't really have the longest hair now, but I used to have long hair. Like, was it difficult out there on the island to, to like, was your hair always knotted? Like how difficult was that? It's the Middle Eastern hair. It's the thick mm. hair. I, I don't think anything could break that shit down. Um, yeah, I was fine. It was fine. Mm. Uh, and it was funny because I think even in the slingshot challenge, that reward challenge, people were like, who's that guy? Like the audience. <laughs> they were like, who's that guy with the long hair? We forgot Ferris has hair. It's <laughs> so funny. I think I've got like three different like looks. It's like the one with, with the buff, the one with the beanie, and the hair out. Like they're yes. three different people. <laughs> oh my three different personalities you got the the sick braids now that was the first thing mm. when when the finale was airing you posted a picture of like your hair braided or yeah. braided and i was like all right we've unlocked the next ferris we've unlocked yeah, half a million dollar ferris. <laughs> <laughs> no i absolutely love it um ferris uh, we do have a few comments here amy said thank you all it was fantastic amazing uh, Lane adds, we love Ferris with his hair down. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then Amy adds in, yes, we had the whole Ferris hair combo while we were waiting for y'all. Oh, yeah, that was that was earlier. Ferris, yeah. I told you they were talking in the chat before we went live. And, yeah, I went all the way back to the chat. Matt, Ferris, we live for when you let your gorgeous long hair out at challenges. <laughs> like, the smiling assassin, need, we need the Annihilator. An oh, do we like, yeah. wh which one do you like better, Ferris? The smiling assassin or an island? Honestly, I got turned off from the name because after Kelly went, so Kelly's the one who, who came up with that name. And then after the show, Ed, they were like, no, Pia. Pia is the smiling assassin. I'm like, well, yes. I, don't them. I don't freaking want that name. <laughs> you know, if, if it's Pia's, let her have it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. We're still, we're still workshopping names. Who knows? Maybe next season, if I see Kelly again, she can come up with a <laughs> <laughs> Well, just I, I'll I'll give you this is gonna be such a terrible name, but with the long hair, he can be Thor, the smiling annihilator. That's too long, Ren. <laughs> oh, it doesn't flow out the tongue. I I yeah. am like, oh, I was just pitching for a movie. Let me just. It was like <laughs> everyone kept calling me like the wish version of Aquaman when I was in the water. <laughs> You know, the, 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 worst the, the super funny thing is I had a question initially where I typed it mm -hmm. out and I was like, ask him if he ever got compared to Aquaman. 
And then yeah, I immediately like erased. <laughs> I erased it. I was like, no, that's stupid. It was like that thing where you take a piece of paper and then you just yeah. like scrub. Yeah. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, that's stupid. <laughs> um, no. So the last official question we got for you, Ferris, and I, I mean, feel free. I don't know what your time's like, but uh, when we end the live, if you want to stay by, we'll definitely chat some more with you. But the last official question I have for you is, obviously you said you would love to go back. You said that mm -hmm. in your exit interview. I don't know if that's changed. And you're like, yeah, man, like, let me go back out there and play again. I'm keen. We talked to Valeria about this. They have betting odds for the likelihood of someone going back. And you were one of the highest odds. Valeria actually said she, she learned about that when you posted about it. So I don't know how you feel about that. But was that weird when you saw that, that people were betting that, you know, you're one of the favorites to return? Yeah, look, let me just say, guys, don't bet on that stuff, number one. <laughs> like, when I saw it, I was like, huh, really? Like, no, they're not going to deliver to this season so quickly. Uh, my heart sank a bit, I won't lie, because it, that meant that filming would start. What's the filming would start in pretty much two months, two, three months. And that makes my toes curl. And yeah, no, I don't, please, no. I, I, need, I need a bit of, I don't know how people, because some people did it back to back, you know, back to know back, yeah. Mm. That shit. But I, I think I need like at least a year to just recover a bit and then and then go back. But yeah, my heart sank when I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> what if you could pick a theme to go mm. back on? Like, would it be all stars? Would it be fans versus favorites? Uh, if there was a certain theme, what would you want the theme to be? Fans versus favorites would be would be fun, but um, I don't know how long I'd last in a season like that. So maybe something like a winners at war. Or an all-star season mm. where like more of an even playing field that I can, you know, sort of get my way into um, you know, at least to merge. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to do an all-stars or a winners at war just so I can compare myself to the other other players as well. I'm very competitive, so I I'd love to sort of take that on. I mean, all that I'll say is we better see you back out there, man. Ollie, yeah. is there anything you want to add before we wrap up this live stream here? I mean, no, you've kind of said it all like, Ferris, you're, by the way, Ferris, did you know you're the sole survivor? Really? Yeah, apparently so. That's what Randy's been saying right. this entire <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone, thank God for that quick. Um, <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. No, but um, all I said, like, congratulations, Ferris, on your game. Like, truly, it it was so nice to see. And I am I'm a person who loves subtlety in Survivor. Like, mm. I, and that's just come on from everyone's like, big moves, big moves, big moves. I'm like, that's yeah. great, but what can you do subtly? And your subtle game, I absolutely enjoyed because it actually proved you can play a masterful, subtle game, which then when you look at it, is so big. So mm. thank, thank you for doing that. Thank you so much, Ollie. I appreciate that. Like this, again, like, I'm, I'm so happy that I, I got to actually speak to you guys. I'm a bit upset that the rest didn't join us as well. Uh, but no, nah, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so I, much. I I tried. I re I reached out to Teg with and Matthew. I'm like, look, I don't even know if Ferris is going to do the interview now. If you're not here, I'm just <laughs> telling you right now. So I try. I actually took a shot. So that's why I'm still like trying to recover here. Um, that was kind of on a whim. Let me see. Uh. Elaine is saying in the chat, we will miss, we miss Ferris already. When will we see him again? Mention his TikTok. Um, yeah, I need to check out your TikTok. I will say, she's probably talking about the show, but in terms of the podcast, Ferris has an open invitation whenever he wants to come on and chat Survivor with us. Ferris, Thanks. like, seriously, man, this was, it was an honor. Like, mm. the, this is like kind of speaking past the podcast now and just being like, how much I appreciate the support that you've given our show, like the kind words that you've said about our show. Like I appreciate it so much, obviously like everything on our interactions on social media, the fact that you love the banter we were giving you about you and Kirby and the rom-com. And I know Valeria, we just told Valeria that like, she's like our top favorite. And she's like, you can't go to Ferris and say the same thing. But I, I will say like, the cast was just so. All these like Randy, don't rope me into this. <laughs> don't, don't make me get. I'm, I'm not. 
You saw what happened between him, Garrick, and Raymond. I'm not. I'm not getting it. I'm not. <laughs> but, Put it back on Ollie. <laughs> yeah, but Ferris, I will say, like as a winner, point as a winner, you are one mm. of the best winners that I've ever seen, and I think that's mm. something that we get from the community. Everything I see is people being. And there's so much, there's a lot of negative in the survivor community, but something that has always stayed positive has been how people feel about you as a winner, how you represented your culture going out there. You played an honest game to an extent. You stayed loyal throughout. Um, and there's a reason that you are the sole survivor. I, everything that Ollie just said, you played in my mind, you swept the final tribal council. Yes, it wasn't a perfect game because you didn't go without getting votes, but I don't know how closer you could get to playing a perfect game because mm -hmm. the decisions, the moves you made throughout were flawless. Every time that you were willing to work with your enemies, you didn't burn bridges that you couldn't fix. It was honestly a master class of Thanks. of a game that you played my friend and i i would love to see you back out there because i genuinely think in terms of survivor winners all all time international us however you want to look at it i think you're one of the better ones of all time man and definitely of survivor australia i would definitely mm. put you in the top three of best winners mm. all time you really deserve this man and a huge congratulations to you and again thank you for joining the show man Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for, for both of you, kind words, honestly. It, it means so much. Like, I think um, one, of, one of the things where, you know, on the night when I found out I, I won, the first thing I said was, I, I hope I'm a worthy winner. Um, because I, I know a lot of these fans, they can be quite savage. And Super not cruel, yeah. And I know what that feels like. When you're watching a show, um, you're, you're so hooked on the show, and then the person that you want to win doesn't win. It's, like, frustrating. So I kind of get that, and I was just like, I just hope people are satisfied with this ending of, of my game. Um, mm -hmm. And, no, it's been so humbling to see that, you know, a lot of people are happy with the season from start to finish, and all credit to the whole cast as well for making this such a spectacular season and, like, a one-in-a-million season, honestly. Um, yeah. yeah, it is. It is so humbling to to see a bunch of people get around me, um, and I, I couldn't be more proud of myself. So thank you, thank you so much for for everything, and I honestly thank you to the fans for just getting behind whoever it may be, getting behind someone and showing your support and your love for the show. It means so much, and honestly, it just riles me up to want to go back again and make a ten times better season. So this would not be like. It, happening if it wasn't for all of the support that that came with the show so thank you very much to everyone i was very 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 close to going to party city and buying like one of those confetti things where you like launch out <laughs> and i was gonna buy that and i was gonna end the show with that so i'm sorry i didn't end up doing it i got super busy today but i still want people to know that like just imagine it like that is survivor au titans v rebels the sole survivor, Ferris. Pour one out for Ferris. Thanks, drink, for drink for the both of us. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to the channel. We got more chats for, for you. Oh, my gosh. Don't take a shot in podcast. <laughs> uh, we have more chats for you. We will be joined by Eden on Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern time, so very early in the morning. He will be here to break down his entire game. Ferris, again, thank you. Everyone watching, enjoy the rest of your day. And take a shot for every time I said Soul Survivor or Ollie said it. I don't think Ferris ever said it. So, Ferris, I mean, you are the Soul Survivor, my friend. I am the Soul Survivor. Now, shot. Oh, take a shot. <laughs> Everybody take a shot. Thank you, guys.